Work Plus Connection. The Work Plus Connection is a co-production of the Florida Area Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the Florida Community Media, and Bristol Community College. The purpose of the Work Plus Connection is to discuss issues and spotlight training programs, events, opportunities that are relevant to local employers in the area's workforce. My name is Kimberly Crow-Monis, and I'm, I'm the Vice President at the Florida Area Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Today we're going to talk about South Coast Rail. Commuter Rail is back and in the news again. So today we're going to have Rob Mellion, President and CEO of the Florida Chamber of Commerce and Industry, be our guest. He's going to answer a whole bunch of questions about commuter rail in the South Coast. I think it's going to be a great and interesting show. Rob, welcome and shall we begin? Let's start. Let's <laughs> have some fun here. Uh, first question. When is the train coming to Fall River, the South Coast? Ouch. <laughs> right <laughs> off the bat, we're going into the fun stuff. It's, it's been frustrating. And I would have to say that it's probably going to be some time before we start buying tickets for the train. Uh, there's a lot that's in play right now. I think that based on some of the factors we're going to talk about today, some of the uh, new opportunities that have presented themselves over the last couple of months. It is more likely than it was last year that there'll be a South Coast Rail, but the story's not completely written yet. Why has the Chamber been so, um, so much of a supporter in the past 25 years, in your opinion? That's a lot easier than the first question. <laughs> And the answer to that, Kimberly, is because if you could be part of an economic development project that could add to the sustainability of your region and your community, it could be game-changing for your region and community by providing a direct connection with Boston to Fall River that could lead to more companies coming down here more opportunity for people living up here to be able to sustain themselves through employment with higher paying jobs. The opportunity to create additional buildings and housing, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you take that on as part of your program of work? So the big opportunity would probably be, um, I mean, you're talking about different things, but a lot of it, too, is kids that are graduating from school that live yes. in our area that cannot maintain, you know, a living on jobs here, that they could actually have better access to the Boston jobs. Precisely. So that's one of the aspects to this. There's, there are a number of problems that employers in our area have, and there's a number of problems that a lot of our youth in colleges throughout the area have, and for that matter, some of our youth who are in the high schools who are about to go into higher education have, and that is employment, or for in the case of the employers, it's qualified employees. So on the employment side, a lot of our youth come out of college, and they're not necessarily finding the $80,000, $100,000 positions that are available in Providence or in Boston here in the Fall River area. There's a lot of service positions that are available and more so today than ever before. Particularly now that a uh, number of our distribution facilities are ramping up like the new Amazon facility. Mm -hmm. But then too we're going to have the New Harbor Mall converted over into the South Coast Place Plaza and that's going to be a whole bunch of service jobs. But these are all $30,000 paying jobs not necessarily what somebody is seeking when they're coming out of college. So we have a brain drain that has happened in our area here. Well, what if Fall River, New Bedford, and other communities here in the southeastern region were more of a bedroom community for Boston? So they were going up to Cambridge because it's very hard to get Cambridge to come down here, but we have been working for that to happen. Right. And a great example is the Mass Biologics facility in Meditech they're here, but while we are working to grow that industry down here, it creates an opportunity for people rather than having them move to Norton. Which is very expensive to live. They can stay here because they can jump on a train and go up to Cambridge and jump on a train and come down. And quite frankly, today's train travel is very different than train travel years ago because you get a Wi-Fi connection. So 
today's youth can have a mobile office while they're on the train. So there's that aspect. There's also the aspect of educational opportunity. So a lot of our youth today, there are some great colleges in our area here, but Boston opens up and all of a sudden 30 more colleges open up to our area youth because they can sit on the train, do their homework or their assignments and... Versus sitting in traffic. Exactly, Absolutely. versus sitting in traffic. And quite frankly, for the person who commutes, you can't be texting while you're driving legally. <laughs> you can't be emailing while you're driving legally. You can do that on the train. It's very stressful too. Yes. What is the current status of the South Coast Rail currently? And this is complicated. Mm -hmm. And this leads to our conversation why we wanted to do this program. We are, I hate to use this term, but we're at a crossroads. We, we're there. And a lot of it has to do with the Stoughton route the, which is the preferred route as of 2013 and its viability. Many would say, the Chamber has said, that the Stoughton route is the ideal. If you could have an ideal South Coast Rail connection to Boston, you would have the Stoughton route. It's an electric train. It is a nice direct shot heading north, it is the ideal. The problem is that it looks great on paper but is incredibly hard to effectuate in real life. And that is due to all of the issues that must be remediated in order to make it happen. Legal issues, environmental challenges, uh, challenges associated with Mass Historic, the Mass Historic Commission, because there are archaeological problems. And this is all the, the real genesis of the problems is the Hakama Swamp. And for those who don't know, the Hakama Swamp is this large area north of Fall River that goes all the way up to just south of Easton. I mean, it is a large, large area, kind of like our bio reserve here in Fall River, only it's north of us. And the proposed Stoughton route literally cuts an intersection going across, an 18-mile intersection going across that Hakama Swamp. So one of the difficulties that we have is that in 2013, the state of Massachusetts effectuated a number of EPA regulations, actually MEPA regulations because they're Massachusetts EPA regulations, which really make building on wetlands very difficult. What's well, a swamp? And it's wetlands. So you're going to need a whole host of variances. And you're going to have to fight a whole host of environmental groups who are, are essentially pulling a, if everybody remembers Charlton Heston with the rifle over his head during the presidential election, not over my dead body with the <laughs> rifle. Well, that's how a lot of these environmental groups feel about putting an electric trestle system going across the Hakama Swamp. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense in that regard. And in addition to that, too, you have the archaeological issues that I brought up. So this was the home, the Hakma Swamp was the home to the Mashpee Wampanoag tribe. And there is a 9,000 year record of habitation, human habitation within the Hakama Swamp. So anybody who recalls what happened with Meditech, you can only, when Medtech, when we were trying to get them in Freetown, you can only imagine what we're going to be facing with Mass Historic for an 18 mile area. And then another environmental issue that we have is that 13 endangered species have been identified as inhabitants of the Hakama Swamp. I've said this on radio and in newspaper interviews on behalf of the Chamber. Prior to being CEO of the Chamber of Commerce, I served on a zoning board of appeals. I also served on a conservation commission. And I can tell you, one endangered species being identified can stop a project. Big projects. Never mind several. Little, I'm not, I mean, you know, big projects like uh, uh, a Walmart project, it can be stopped by just the identifying of 
one endangered species. Here we've got 13 that have been identified. In addition to that, the Hakama is the watershed to five communities <laughs> and is reservoir to two. That's my definition of some serious challenges associated with Stoughton. Then you have the engineering challenges. We're talking about a multi-tier trestle system because it has to be, you're building it on a swamp, so it's going to be multi-level. Multi tiered correct. In order to get over the environmental issues, you're going to have to build a multi-story steel trestle system over the swamp in order to remediate and mitigate. You're building that trestle system on top of a sponge. So you're going to have some environmental issues to overcome financially because it's going to take some new science to pull this thing off. I didn't say it was impossible. It's just going to be very expensive. And then in addition to that, the Stoughton route literally goes through the town of Easton. Easton, a community to the north of us, is a 300-year-old town. And what happened is South Coast Rail or rail service here in the southeastern region was discontinued in 1958. And in that dormancy, the town has expanded onto the railroad tracks. I mean, literally, there are houses built on top of the old railways. And there are buildings on top of the old railway system. So you're either going to knock down downtown Easton or you're going to have to go under it. Well, we all know that can't happen, and why is that? <laughs> because Easton is just north of the Hakama Swamp, and anybody who has done any environmental testing there knows that you drill six feet into Easton, into the ground, and you're going to hit water. They didn't say it was impossible, but you're going to have a big dig. And this leads to the biggest challenge of all with South Coast Rail under Stoughton, which is, I'm sorry to be so long-winded on no, this, but no. it's really important for people to understand. I want it. people to understand. That's why we're here. Cost. So it used to be estimated that the cost for South Coast Rail under the Stoughton route was going to be $2.3 million. That was back in 2007, 2009, and we've been running with those costs up until recently. The Baker administration, wanting to get up-to-date information, similar to what they did with the MBTA, they initiated an independent study to discern what the real costs of implementing a South Coast Rail would be. And the cost came out to be $3.4 billion provided there are no legal challenges or environmental issues to overcome. <laughs> That's a perfect scenario. So you do the math and you can quickly get up to about $4 billion in today's dollars in order to produce a Stoughton route. It's the ideal. It's just not practical. And that's what you have to understand. Um, what evidence can you provide to support the Chamber's contention that South Coast Rail would benefit our area economically? That's a great question. And a lot of people who feel that rail is unnecessary or feel that there are better ways to spend money, I ask them to look to see what has. You don't have to go far for the evidence. I ask people to look at the Heart to Hub project from Worcester to Boston that recently went online mm -hmm. and is now active. So Worcester wanted it badly and they got it. And now they're benefiting from it. So is Framingham. I mean, the whole line over there is getting an economic boost because of the Which railway our area system. Which really is That's right. a need for. Which is what could happen for us. So that's a new one. An older one that really gives us a demonstration of what rail connection can do is just drive north 20 minutes. Go to Mansfield or to Easton or to Stoughton and see for yourself what rail does because that's where the railway line ends. And that's where the $800,000 houses end too because they're the suburbs of Boston. The suburb of Boston moved 
down to Stoughton, Easton, and Mansfield. I'm not saying we're going to become a, a suburb of Boston. No, no. But it will generate economic activity through that connection. There's no doubt about it. And it can be leveraged in many different ways. There's so many different ways that we could take advantage of that connection to Boston. It can be used for school, as we were talking about earlier. Students from this area could go to Bridgewater State University by using a train, rather than having to drive up. For some people, Bridgewater State's not possible. But through a train, it could be made possible. So funny that you say that. My son goes an hour every morning just to get to school. Then he parks, and it's another half hour to walk. So you're absolutely right. And the Boston schools become something that is possible, too. The Boston law schools. You know, anybody who wants to get a graduate education, there are very few graduate degrees and doctorate degree opportunities in the southeastern region. All the doctorate degree programs are in Boston. So they would be going to school there, but in turn coming back and spending right. money here at night. Living here. Right. Living here. So the businesses would actually right. uh, do best for that. Now, I know the Chamber has been working on the South Coast Rail for the last 25 years, uh, 16 of which I've been involved, and you've been around for eight, the last eight yeah. years. Um, in your opinion, what is different now than 25 years ago? The first thing that is different is a recognition that the Stoughton route is ideal but is a non-starter. All of our eggs for the last seven years has been on the Stoughton route. And we've been fighting for something that Boston doesn't want. It's not that Boston doesn't want us to be connected with them. Boston doesn't want to spend billions of dollars on this project. It's a hard sell for them. Whereas a multi-million dollar train opportunity is an easier sell to Boston just like a $200 million transportation project was an easier sell with MassDOT, which is now almost completed. And it's going to be followed up by an $80 million project, which will be the 79 North project. So when you have million after the name of the project versus billions, it makes a difference. So recognition that Stoughton was a non-starter was important because it looked like we were going to just throw rail out the window completely until the Baker administration simultaneously trying to seek a solution for us because the Baker administration, Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito have heard from us that something needs to be done. Fall River and New Bedford are the only major cities in Massachusetts not connected to Boston through rail. We're the only two major cities in the state that are not now rail connected. They've heard that. They've also heard from us that when they call for us to go to Boston to meet with them, it takes us two and a half hours on something that should only take us about 40 minutes. They've heard that too. So recognizing that there is definitely a need, and the need is getting worse because traffic on 24 is getting worse. And it's going to become much worse as soon as Amazon's completely open. They're and open. And it's already, it's, it's, it's there. So anybody who is a frequent traveler to 24 recognizes that you are every day doing battle with tractor trailer traffic on a two lane highway system. It's going to get worse. And it already is getting worse. Where the line of cars used to start just uh, south of 93 or onto the 128 split over there, it's now happening uh, right up at Rayham and getting lower and lower and lower. It's coming closer and closer to almost you leave Fall River and you're in it's traffic. right there. Why are we still talking about the Stoughton route if we have all of these challenges ahead of us? Because there wasn't an alternative on the table other than Stoughton until now. And that's what I was leading to is that what has changed is recognizing there is a need, but recognizing too that $4 billion isn't going to fly without federal assistance, and there isn't going to be any federal assistance for we this. We all know that. Then we have to rethink rail transportation and make it reasonable and practical. Like the Heart to Hub. Heart to Hub is not a electric multi-billion dollar system. It was a diesel option. So that first, let's turn this into a diesel option. It's not sexy. It's not 
going to give us the environmental impact that we necessarily wanted, although you're going to get a lot of cars off the road by getting more people onto rail. So you get that effect. But you take that off and you switch it with diesel, and that reduces cost dramatically. That allows for the MBTA to use its existing trains and not have to bring in new trains that are modified for electric. So that reduces cost dramatically. And in addition to that, you're able to use existing trackage. That lowers costs. Now, we're going to have to, in some areas, upgrade trackage because the trackage down here, which, quite frankly, didn't work. We had no rail travel about seven years ago. Today, we have freight rail travel running all across southeastern Massachusetts. Those are the Mass Coastal Lines. There have been some significant upgrades to those lines, but they're only good for 35 miles per hour for freight, not human freight, but commercial freight. And what we'll need to do now is take those tracks, overlay them with certified tracks that can operate at 75 miles per hour. And there's your cost. But it's not going to be in the billions. It's going to be in the millions. And there is a pool of South Coast Rail money that could be leveraged for this purpose. So this is the new Middleborough extension option that people are talking about today. It is not South Coast Rail in the sense of Stoughton. It's not going to be 10 trains a day from Fall River and 10 trains a day or 20 trains a day from New Bedford. It is going to be very modest in the beginning. You're talking about a couple of trains coming out of Fall River initially. You're talking about a couple of trains, but you're talking about how many people on those trains. That's right. Okay, so you Precisely. slowly transition Thank is you what I'm that. hearing. Exactly. That's missed in this because it's not three people sitting on the train. Right. So you start modestly and you build it up. The point is there's the word start. We've been talking about South Coast Rail for 25 years and there's been no start. And that's what has changed. That's the game-changing element to this is that a Middleborough option is something that could be in operation within five years or less. So you're talking about timeline five years versus what for the Stoughton? That's an interesting one because in talking with Secretary Pollack, Secretary of Transportation in Massachusetts, the new timeline, so new price 3.4 with no challenges, about 4 billion with challenges, the timeline, the new timeline is we can start building South Coast Rail if it's Stoughton in 2029. <laughs> So maybe my provided, it. provided, so comma, provided, here's the lawyer in me, that there are no legal challenges. Which we already know. Or environmental challenges. And we already know that there's that as well. So when the chamber made comments earlier in this year that South Coast Rail under Stoughton isn't buildable in this generation, now you know why. It's not buildable in this generation. It's not going to help any of us. You're building something for the next generation. Right, right. So you just said Whereas a Middleborough extension route is tangible. It's something that could be in operation relatively quickly. And these economic development projects, we have learned, they happen faster than you may think. And a great example of this is the $200 million waterfront project that is about to be completed. You know, for those who say these big jobs, these big government jobs never get completed, yes, they do. And for those of you who um, don't understand what you're talking about, that's the 79 project yes. uh, by the water pro waterfront. The we were told, lands. we were told years ago, I mean, I remember when I started as CEO, we were told, never happen, you'll never get those ramps down, you'll never get the funding for it. It's going to take years. When it happens, it's going to be a 20-year project. Right. Not the case. Um, who publicly has endorsed the um, alternative to the Stoughton route? So, Mayor Correa has publicly endorsed the project. Senator Rodericks, State Senator Rodericks has, along with many of the legislative delegation. The South Coast Development Partnership has. South Coast Development Partnership is an interesting group. They work out of UMass Dartmouth, so UMass Dartmouth obviously sees the benefit of rail, and they are a business entity made up of, or they are a, a kind of like a, they're not really a chamber of commerce, but they're more like a, a business association type entity that is made up of business leaders, education leaders, and elected officials. 
and they have come out positively towards exploring the Middleboro option as well. And so has Rail to Boston and a number of other groups. And the momentum is definitely growing. The Fargo Area Chamber of Commerce, our board of directors recently voted that we are in favor of the state exploring alternatives to Stoughton. And the reason being is because the chamber recognizes that Stoughton's a non-starter. So that's where we're at with as far as support, and its support's definitely growing. Why do you think practical South Coast Rail is possible, personally? Okay, get the chamber out of it. I personally think that it is reasonable, practical, and possible because of one, uh, what I've witnessed up in Boston. You know, part of the role of being the CEO of the Chamber of Commerce is that you, you spend a lot of time in Boston advocating on behalf of area businesses. And I work a lot with our Boston partners like the Associated Industries of Massachusetts. I work with the Boston Chamber. I work uh, with the National Federation of Independent Businesses uh, based in Boston, MassBio. Work with the Baker Administration. Work with our legislators up at the State House. A big difference, and what was the dark matter, in my opinion, that really put the heels on a Stoughton route was the lack of support from Boston due to the price. Boston's big concern is making the MBTA work. And the price tag to make the MBTA work the way that we would like it to work is going to be about $7 billion, maybe more. So when you start talking about your own $4 billion project, that only services a small piece of the state. Boston feels for you, but says, not right now. And that's gone because we're talking in the millions. We're talking about a reasonable cost. We're talking about essentially expanding the existing Middleborough route down here and it's slowly phasing this up, ramping it up, it's reasonable to them. They're not opposing it. Well, I don't know about you, but I would like to see something happen in the next couple of But that's of the years. big thing for me, is the fact that we're not being opposed by Boston to do this project. The fact that we don't have the lines of environmental groups opposing this. We don't have the town of Easton opposing this. That is something that I look to as making this real. And then we have the Baker administration. They see that this can get done in the time frame of a Baker governorship. So that politically makes South Coast Rail possible because one of the difficult issues that we've had to overcome in the past is that because you're talking about a 20 year project, due to all the permitting issues that you have to overcome and the challenges that you have to overcome, you get one governor in for four years or eight years and you know they want they want a legacy so it doesn't happen that way so why are you gonna put all your eggs into something that's not gonna give you a legacy I mean I'm, I hate to say it, but there's there is self-interest in this so this can get done within the time frame of a governor in addition to that what's happened to us in the past is something has happened under one governor and then another governor comes in with a completely different plan and that was, that's actually what happened to us about 10 years ago. And everything is just lost. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time. And I'd like to thank Robert Million, CEO of the Florida Area Chamber of Commerce. And on behalf of the Florida Area Chamber of Commerce and Industry and its member businesses, please shop locally. Support the local business whenever you can. Thank you for watching the Workforce Connection. Thank you.